Bourbon barrel liquor cabinets are amazing. Mine includes a middle shelf, spinning Lazy Susan bottom shelf, LED lighting, door that latches shut. Let's get to it. I picked this barrel up from a local brewery who was done using it. Step one is to remove these middle iron bands. Multiple ways to do it. I use a hammer and a pry bar. And we keep the end bands on, otherwise the whole barrel will fall apart. So this is just step one, at least the way I do it. Once the metal bands are off, I lay the barrel on its side, get a nice little stop block, which I just use a 2x4, and we're going to start sanding this thing down. I use 80 grit to start with, and I don't want to take off most of that printing from the, from the distillery. I want to maintain a lot of that, but this just knock the rough edges off, and so people aren't getting splinters when they start handling it later on. After the barrel's all sanded, I put the rings back on, and I use self-tapping metal screws to go through these iron rings into the wood barrel. You know, I figured out later on that it's easier to use a drill bit, a metal, kind of a high, high metal carbon drill bit to get through that metal band first and then put in the self-tapping screws. Otherwise, you spend a lot of force and effort trying to get these self-tapping screws through this iron band or steel, I'm not really sure, into that solid oak barrel to secure them. And I do this about every stave on the barrel. The next step is to mark where your door is going to be. And I'm just using a straight edge, which is the pry bar. Just kind of go down. I kind of eyeball it. I don't have a general rule. I know about how big I want the door. And I'm marking these lines where a stave is separate from the other. So I'm not going to cut through any staves. It'll be the gaps in the staves. It's kind of what determines the size of the door. Once you got your lines marked out, go ahead and take an angle grinder and get through those iron bands. As you can see, we're cutting through right where the two staves butt up against each other to make the barrel. Once the bands are cut through, the barrel will still be held together by the staves from the top and bottom uh, iron bands. We do not cut through those. Those hold the whole barrel together. So to get through the curvature of the barrel, I just take a handsaw and cut down until the saw will poke through in the middle. And then you can stick your saw blade down and cut to the end of those metal bands. Uh, you could also use a jigsaw, which would be much easier, but I'm a hands-on person. And when you do the top and bottom, you can pop the door off. There'll be a little bit of pressure, so don't be alarmed. And you'll get your first look at the inside of this barrel. Now, the inside of this barrel was charred from the distillery. Um, a lot of your barrels are going to have that if you're using a bourbon barrel. So be prepared to scrape all that off, and there's what we call alligator bark, just the charred wood that scrapes off easy. However, after that, I found the best method was to power wash it, and this will get a lot of that excessive uh, char off. Now, be aware that you're not going to remove the black char from the inside of this. This is a burnt wood. Um, so you got to let your customer know, and if they're not happy with that, maybe this is not the cabinet for them. But this is an authentic bourbon barrel, so it will be black and charred on the inside. While your barrel's drying out, go ahead and get two boards and glue them together. That's what I did. And once they're dried, you have a bigger board. I put a nail in the middle and created a circle. This uh, measurement comes from the circumference of the bottom of the barrel. And I just use a pencil and a ruler with a nail in the middle and create a circle. After that circle's made, I'm going to take my jigsaw and cut that circle out and that's going to be the lazy susan bottom shelf and this will be our spinning shelf at the bottom and you can repeat this process for the mid shelf the middle shelf will be a slightly larger circle and i'm going to clamp this board against it and that'll create a flat straight edge and i'll run my jigsaw against that to chop that off this flat bit will be the front of the shelf and that just makes it easier for the customer to reach into the barrel at that bottom shelf without hitting their hands on this top shelf. Everybody's favorite bit is sanding. Sand, sand, sand. And then sand some more to knock those edges off. We don't want sharp edges on any of these shelving. And yes, I sand both sides because you should do a good job on even the things that aren't visible. Next step is staining. As you can see, I'm doing it pretty primitively. Uh, just a paper or a plastic bag to protect my hand because I ran out of gloves. But we're going to stain this with some dark walnut. It's getting kind of laid out, but that'll let it dry overnight. 
After your stain is dried, I coat each of these with shellac, and I do three coats. I do one to two on the back side, and at least three coats on the front top side, because um, it will be more resistant to damage and take the wear and tear of bottles of glasses rubbing against it. While your shellac or protective sealant is drying, I go ahead and start cleaning up the rest of the barrel, uh, sanding off these rough edges is where the cabinet doors will be going, and this is going to be the hands-on area, so I want to make sure all these edges are smooth and looking good. This is an optional step I just started doing. I take a wire brush on my drill and start beating up these iron bands, and by beating up I'm really cleaning off the excess rust. Um, the color still stays the same, but at least the sharp edges of that rust kind of get knocked down quite a bit, and it looks a little more polished and clean in the end, uh, and I really like it. The Lazy Susan bracket is a giant pain in the ass. Um, I just kind of eyeball line it up. Um, I do measure where the center of the barrel is roughly, and I try and just eyeball that bracket in the middle. You can see that marking I made there. And then it's a little tricky from there on out. And this is just kind of showing you the measurements I came up with, but not too important because every barrel is a little different. This is just a test fit to make sure the shell fits in there and can spin freely once it's centered, which is a pain in itself. The next part's tricky, so I'll try to explain it quickly. You have to drill a hole in the bottom of the barrel. That's where your screwdriver and screw will come up from the bottom, and through those little holes, attach your spinning shelf to the bracket. You can't go top down. Uh, I mean, you could, but it wouldn't look good. So you got to go bottom up, and now the shelf is screwed in from the bottom of the barrel, and it can spin and not move around. Next step is getting these hinges on the barrel. So I hit these with a hammer to give a slight curve to them, and I just got these at a, a local Home Depot store. Um, they come flat, but I just kind of hammer them to get fit the curvature of the barrel. So screw one side on, and you want to screw them in between these two bands. This is important, because if you screw them like very high top and maybe low bottom, the middle of that barrel wood will hit each other, and it won't fully open. So you really have to get those hinges close to each other but with enough distance that they'll support the weight of the door. Um, once they're on there just kind of mark your holes, pre-drill, and then I hand screw those uh, screws in there. But it's really important to get these hinges close enough to each other that will allow the door to almost fully open but yet create enough support that it won't kind of sag and collapse on itself. The next step is polyurethaneing, and I choose to use polyurethane for these outside coats rather than shellac or any other sort of uh, protective sealant. Um, I'm sure you could use multiple other ones. This is the one I'd use. Uh, polyurethane seems to have more of a protective quality than some of the others. And that top of that barrel is going to be used for people to set their drinks on, set things on, so it's going to get some wear and tear. And I use polyurethane for the sides of the barrel as well. And you can see how much it makes the wood pop once you finally get that polyurethane on there. After you're done polyurethaneing, I put that middle shelf in. And I just use L brackets. They're not really seen there. Um, but it's just L brackets lined up on the edges of that barrel. And then I just screw the shelf to the L brackets. And I put that above the bunghole in the back of the barrel. Um, and for my design, that's important. Because that's where I'm going to run this uh, cabling through for the LED lighting. This LED lighting is a single roll with one AC power side, and that's out the bunghole. The rest of the lighting I run around the bottom of the barrel shelf, which wasn't shown, and then back up the top, which is behind me, as you can see, and that just circles around the top of the barrel in that little groove up there. And when that's done, I'll cut off the excess of the LED lighting. I like to keep the LED lighting hidden in that groove, um, so when you're kind of at ground level, you can't see that strip up there. Go ahead and take some extra time to clean up any rough spots. I use an angle grinder to clean up those iron bands where the door will be so people aren't hitting themselves with shards of metal. I put a little latch on there uh, so people can add a lock and keep their stash secure. I use electrical tape to cover up that one strip in the back of the barrel which has to run from the bottom to the top so that's not bright and into your eyes. And as you can see, everything's lit up really nice. You don't see the uh, LED lighting. And after all that work, it's time to take some Texas whiskey and pour yourself a celebratory drink to celebrate a job well done. 
I only sell these barrels locally. I don't want to deal with shipping yet, but maybe one day we'll get there. But uh, for those who get them here in Omaha, Nebraska, congratulations and enjoy your new shelf. My website is leafandknot.com, and I'm going to start uploading some videos on how I make some of the things I make, which include cutting boards, hanging shelves, home decor sort of items, and more recently, these bourbon and wine barrels for liquor cabinets. That's kind of my process and kind of what I want to make when I make these sort of shelves. I don't want to do anything less, unless the customer requests it, of course. Either way, I hope you learned something and had fun. Take it easy.